Hey YouTube, this is Marcus Orgero, and again with another video. Today I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about uh, something pertaining to video games. Uh, for those of you who may not have seen other videos on my channel, I am a big fan of video games. I think they're an amazing way to uh, tell a story in an interactive way, you know, to allow the consumers of your product or the people exploring your story to actually participate and physically do things in it, and I think it's a unique medium for that. Uh, it's also just fun sometimes, just to play online games with your friends. Uh, it's an art form. Uh, I'm a huge fan of video games. Um, but I have seen a couple of news articles here lately talking about uh, violence in video games and some parent parental concerns. And uh, uh, I've also been participating in some podcasts with uh, a new thing that some friends are trying out called Kentucky Nerd. Uh, live podcast and one of the things with that is we want the content to be uh, child friendly so that a mother or father could uh, could with confidence allow their children to listen to our podcasts or watch our live streams and know that that content would be safe uh, for their kids and uh, so I thought I would take a minute to talk about uh, video game ratings now the, there is an independently regulated group called the ESRB, the Electronic Software Rating Board. And the ESRB has been around for quite a while. Uh, it was founded or, or instituted uh, back in the 90s, I believe, maybe earlier than that. I'll have to look it up. But they, it, they've been around for a while. Uh, in the aftermath of games like Mortal Kombat and Doom and things of that nature. That a fantasy martial arts game as some parents think is just too violent for their kids. Carol Lynn joins us live now from Northridge with more on that story. Carol? There's a master guy you gotta beat at the end. Fatalities are just what happens if you're really brutal to your opponent. You get an opponent, you can rip off his head or something like that. Sounds like a pretty thrilling game and this is the kind of violence that critics are pretty worried about. Cold-blooded murder is making Mortal Kombat the most popular video game in history. Kids relish their victory and their bloody choice. Should they pull out their opponent's heart or simply rip his head off just to see his spinal cord dangle in a pool of blood? Plus, some of the critics say, or they at least concede, that parents have to be there in order to pay for the game, so at least there's some discretion there. And game makers are also talking about a new rating system similar to the movies. We'll see what happens. I'm Carol Lynn reporting live from Northridge. Back to you. All right. Because up until really that point, uh, video games were, they were expanding, but they were still a niche market that most adults saw as a silly little pastime that only children really participated in. Um, they were not really seen as an art form or a way to tell a story. There was no rating systems in place. And, uh, and so, you know, when a game like Mortal Kombat comes out and you can rip your opponent's head off, and you know there's blood everywhere and their spinal columns hanging from the base of their skull uh, or doom comes out and you're running around with a shotgun killing demons and there's fire and blood and things of that nature however pixelated and bad it may look by our standards today at that time that was incredibly realistic and traumatic for parents who were used to seeing you know super mario world on that same hardware and so uh, there was talk of legislation and things of that nature banning certain types of content in video games and uh, eventually the ESRB was founded to sort of bring video games to the same standard of content control as say the movie industry which could have incredibly gory and violent content but they already had this rating system in place so uh, even today the ESRB is still around if you buy uh, physical copies of games. I've got two games here. Now these are rather old, but they're two of the only physical games I have left anymore. Uh, this one is Halo 2 for the original Xbox. Now when you buy a physical game, uh, on the front of the case you will see a rating tag. It's usually this little white rectangle and you can see this one is rated M for Mature 17 years and up. And if you flip the case over, on the back they have what they call content descriptors which will give you a rough idea of the type of content that is in this game that warranted the rating that you see. Now if you buy a game second hand and say it doesn't come with the original case uh, the disc itself will actually have the rating here. 
Now here's another game. This one is a bit older than that. It came out on the original PlayStation called Legend of Dragoon. You can see here it is rated T14 and you can flip it over and find the content descriptors here that tells you what's in the game that warranted that particular rating. So the vast majority of games that you will encounter uh, pass through the ESRB. Uh, there are some, say, indie games or independently developed games that are maybe in alpha or beta stage, uh, you know, that may not have an ESRB rating, but 99.9% .9 chance if you go to Walmart or GameStop and you want to buy your child a video game, it's going to have an ESRB rating on the disc. Alrighty, so you can see here we are on the ESRB.org uh, website on the website you can actually look at a lot of information you can see that they are a member of the IARC the International Age Rating Coalition uh, and you can look at the sort of ratings that the ESRB gives out you can check out details about what each rating means and what age group that particular content uh, is suitable for you can look at the process by which they determine uh, what rating to give uh, a game and how those ratings are supposed to be displayed on the products so if you purchase a game and or if you're thinking about purchasing a game but you don't have a copy of it to look and see what the ESRB rating is and you're just curious on the ESRB website not only can you read about their process and what the ratings mean but you can see here we've got most viewed ratings or you can just look up games and see what ratings they have so we can say let's look up Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo uh, for the Wii and Wii U, E for everyone, Super Nintendo, E for everyone, and so, or we can go, say, Final Fantasy X, there we go, and we can see, here's Final Fantasy X for the PlayStation 2, rated T for Team Blood and Violence, so they are an invaluable resource for looking up information about uh, video games, and not only video games, I've actually started seeing uh, ESRB ratings on applications. Uh, if you're, you know, on your cell phone and things of that nature, I have started seeing ESRB ratings on mobile apps, on cell phones and things of that nature. To, uh, you know, since more parents are giving mobile devices to their children, that would be a useful tool for you to see what sort of content is going to be in that application uh, for your children. So now that we're on the subject of mobile applications, let's talk about digital distribution. I know that there are an increasing number of games that are not purchased physically in a brick and mortar store like Walmart or Best Buy or GameStop or things of that nature. An increasing number of games are purchased digitally using uh, your console of choice. Those ESRB ratings are still published on those uh, digital storefronts. So let's take a look here at a couple. We've got the PlayStation Store up here with uh, Lego Ninjago Movie Video Game. Uh, and you can scroll down here and you can see that it is rated E for everyone, 10 and up. They have that little addendum there, 10 plus in the E rating for cartoon violence. Let's go over here to my Steam client where I brought up the store page for the game Little Nightmares. And you can see a lot of the time in their official trailer or in video footage that is officially released by the developers of the game, they'll actually, the first thing you'll see in the video is the ESRB rating. Uh, we scroll down here and you can see that there is more details on down the page here where they have the rating and the content that is in the games that warrants that uh, rating, the content descriptors. Uh, we can hop over here to Origin and we can see that Battlefield 1 Premium Pass is rated M for Mature because of blood, strong language, and violence. So there again, another digital storefront, but still has the ESRB ratings to tell you what sort of content is in that game. So using the ESRB website, along with whatever digital storefront or brick and mortar store that you wish to use to purchase your games should give you all of the information you need to make an informed decision about whether or not you or your children uh, should be playing that game using that application uh, etc. So we have looked at uh, what the ESRB is, what their website looks like, what kind of ratings uh, games can have and where they're located on the physical media and in the digital storefronts so hopefully you guys have found this information useful hopefully you guys can use it uh, for either your children or even for yourself if you have uh, particular religious convictions or things of that nature that lead you to not necessarily want to see 
uh, or consume certain content in the video games that you buy for yourself, the ESRB ratings are a very handy tool for doing just that. So, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or suggestions about this video, please post them in the comments section below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or suggestions regarding the ESRB and their rating system, please visit their website at www.esrb.org. And as always, this is Marcus out. Y'all have a good one.